Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate the effective annual rate given an APR and the number of compounding periods per year. And then I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate a continuously compounded rate uh, using Excel given the number of years and the annual percentage rate or the nominal rate. So our equation here says EAR, our effective annual rate, is equal to 1 plus and then the APR, or the nominal rate, divided by the number of compounding periods per year, or m, minus one, uh, raised to the power of m, and then minus 1. And what I have in the document is where m is the number of compounding periods per year. Where you may be most familiar from, with this is from quotes from banks. So for example, if you purchase a certificate of deposit and it has quarterly compounding, or quarterly payments, um, it, you're going to have quarterly compounding. So you have four payments per year. So our M in that case would be four. So the bank may quote a rate of let's say 5% on that certificate of deposit, but it would be slightly more than that, the effective annual rate would be, because you're getting to, to compound the interest once every three months. So you're earning interest on the interest once every three months. We're going to move into, after we demonstrate how the effective annual rate is calculated and how compounding affects the effective rate of interest on that debt or on that deposit, we're going to demonstrate continuous compounding. Let's, let's just pull up the spreadsheet here. It looks like this. So we have our APR of 8% and that's going to be our nominal rate. And then we have our effective rates, our effective annual rates given a number of compounding periods per year. So to calculate the effective annual rate, we're going to use the equation that, that I just showed you on the document. We're going to set it equal to 1 plus, and then the APR. We're going to lock that APR into place by putting a dollar sign in front of the B and a dollar sign in front of the 2. And uh, for, for some folks, you're going to, you can just press F4 and it'll put that in place for you. And then we're going to divide that by the number of compounding periods per year close the parentheses, and then shift six to put that up caret in. We're gonna raise it to the power of num the number of compounding periods per year. And then we're gonna subtract one from that answer. So we get 8% here, and I've, I've included a lot of decimal places so you can see what's happening as we add compounding periods per year. So if we go from one to two, we get a pretty good boost there, 0.16%. Um, increase in the effective annual rate or our, our actual return on that. We go from 2 to 4, we get another pretty good boost from 8.16 to 8.24. And as we add compounding periods per year, the effect on the, on the effective annual rate will decrease. So we go from 8.299 or 8.30 for a monthly compounding to a weekly compounding of 52 weeks per year to 8.32. We go to 100 compounding periods per year from 52. We don't see much difference there, 150. I include 252 because that is usually the number of trading days per year. But you see, as we increase now, we're not getting much of a benefit from additional compounding. So we end up with 8,760 compounding periods per year, um, right at about 8.33%. So the last thing I'm gonna show you here is continuous compounding. So with continuous compounding, we assume that it is constantly compounding. We're earning interest on interest every second. Okay. Um, for this equation, we're going to use the EXP function in Excel. So what it looks like is that the effective annual rate or the effective rate is equal to the exponential function APR multiplied by T, the number of years, minus one. Okay. Since our T in this case is just one, it's one year, we're finding out what the continuously compounded rate is for one year. We don't need to put a number in there. We can just put the discount rate in. So I can put in equals EXP. The number is going to be our APR and then minus one, and we get 8.33%. And if I add decimal places, you can see here it's slightly higher than this 8,760. 
So that is demonstration of calculating the effective annual rate given the annual percentage rate and also how to calculate a continuously compounded return. Let me show you one last thing on that um, because if we, we want to find out the return for two years, then we can use the number two and multiply that 8% by two. So I'll put in here equals EXP. Our rate again is 8%. And now we can, calculate, we can calculate the return for two years by taking that multiplied by two and then subtracting one from our answer to get 17.35%. Okay. So that's it for this video. Please let me know if you have any questions.